Good morning. Welcome back to the Higher Grounds Podcast. Thank you for joining the crew today as we are going to address a particular issue about pastoring in your first year in a particular church where God's allowed you to go. Mm -hmm. But uh, to get our preliminaries out of the way, as we always do, I do appreciate these men who join me uh, week after week here on the podcast. Uh, Love them. Appreciate them. Uh, These men are great men. Uh, godly men, guided men, guarded men. Uh, these are some of the greatest men I've ever known in all my life, and they have positively affected my life and made me a better man, a greater man than I've ever been in my life. And I am grateful that they have been a part of my life. And I'm okay. <laughs> Can we stop? I'm going to roll my pants leg up. It's getting real deep in here. <laughs> it's okay. I mean, this one's off the rails. We well, this good dreaded. Uh, they was dreaded more great and greater there than it was in the Ringling <laughs> Brothers Barnum and Bailey Circus back in the day. Yeah, you had a hard time saying that, and you can't say that five times. In <laughs> I don't want to try again. So anyway, uh, the the dreaded bean coffee uh, by the the dread wearing newspaper reporter out in Montana. Hey, it has it has it has revolutionized my life, and <laughs> it's made me a positive individual. That's not true. And you call me a liar. If that's what you got out of it, I mean, <laughs> see that you're already mad. Are you positive? <laughs> <laughs> positive. No. Don't, don't wreck positive. his positivity. It fits him so well. It's, all, it's it's open for interpretation. Did you interpret that that I called you a liar or that I insinuated that you lied? It felt like it. Maybe you're a little sensitive. I think so. <laughs> I think you are. Yeah, but it's in a good way. Is it? I'm unoffendable. Unoffendable. Yes, sir. Hmm. Take it right on the chin, baby. <laughs> How you doing, Mike? Doing great. Things Doing going great. Good. Excited to be back in studio and uh, looking forward to a great podcast today. It's going to be a good, it really will. This will be a good material. So. Be valuable. Uh, it will be valuable, valuable. for folks. Yes, I really believe that. Steve, Where's how it? are you? Doing great. Doing great. Glad to be in studio today. Well, we're and, glad uh, to have you two weeks in yeah, a row. Yeah, I'm telling Isn't you. Isn't that great? Glad, glad to be what here. What do you think, Mike? It's wonderful. Two weeks man. in a row. Wonderful. Can you believe it? <laughs> cruise all together. It's amazing. It's amazing. Yes, sir. Yep. So, yep. Our, I mean, God's good. God's good. <laughs> Everything's good. Lord's good. Uh, ministry's good. It's just all good. Coffee's good. Coffee's good. And the coffee's yeah. excellent. Yeah. Wheezy's good. <laughs> Bub. Bub, he's all right over there. Oh, Bub. Oh, Bub. He, he, and we've got to have Bub with us a couple yeah. of weeks in oh, a yeah. row. Yeah. And he's, he's not, come to a couple of recordings, man. He really just changes the whole atmosphere he does. in the room. He, he brings know? something. He he's does. a man of few words, but when he speaks, you know, he's... Got yeah. some weight to it. He does. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he he gave a good idea. I think we we may we may plow into his idea. He said yeah. we need to have me on the podcast and mm-hmm. and uh, Seth Poindexter on the podcast mm-hmm. and Aaron Wells on the podcast doing a Father's Day episode on. <laughs> Let me tell you some things part. about my daddy. <laughs> yeah. I don't have to pray about my side of things there. I have to prep young Poindexter. But, but here's the blessing. Ready. It's not going live. It's recorded. And so if we don't like it, yeah, we can file 13, friend. Don't right. worry. Don't yeah. worry. Seth can talk enough for all three of them. He can, he, he, my <laughs> Seth can. He can, he, can, he can host that day if you yeah. need to. Really? Oh, yeah. Definitely. He's a runoff at the face I'll tell you, what, guy. I'll tell you what I might sign up He's for. Like you'll let me put a shot collar on him. <laughs> <laughs> to where if he, if I, I think it needs to happen with all three of them. I can, I can smell him starting to get out on the bank. <laughs> Just lay yeah. a little juice to him real good. I'm liking it. Yeah. I'll start training him two weeks before we get him here. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 In Jesus name. In oh, Jesus yes. name. Zap, Jesus zap. name. Absolutely. So how's the upstate? Hmm. Great. And it's you know, very beautiful this time of year. It is. We've got, we got a busy. Uh, it, it, the pollen is bad up there as it is down here in it, the sand. It hills. is. It is. I, I, I think it's just a heavy year for everybody. We've got all kind of people losing their voice. Preacher Fanny at one time lost, lost his voice and mm. was battling it. And, um, Usually, it's when I come back in this area, that pine off the pine. Oh, the pine tree is horrible. But it is, and there's a lot of um, those state parks full of trees, and I mean, it looks like a yellow cloud just coming coming out of it. But um, I guess it was my second or third year here. I was preaching a revival down in Darlington, mm-hmm. and um, I, I decided I was going to go out in the woods and pray that day. It's springtime, <laughs> yeah. so I went out in the woods to pray. You know, I didn't know anything about all this. Didn't, 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 I got out there in the woods, and I'm telling you, I got messed up bad. I was able to go to church, it's, but I don't remember being Did there. Did you leave a perfectly good building to go down the woods and pray? I like doing that. I actually yeah. do. Yeah. I really do. But you have allergies? Those 
Yeah, I did. Yeah, those Bradford pear trees and pine trees down here are, are the ones that they're rough. Brad, that that's the ones that are the toughest around here. Everybody plants those because they're beautiful mm-hmm. and fill in, but they're they're just loaded. Oh yeah. Um, but the upstate's good. You know, still it's very busy because there's a lot of uh, you know trails and parks and all that kind of stuff. So we we enjoy being in that. Well, it's about time for me to bring that. the old kayak up, and it we is. need to go wet a hook. Need to do it. Lord blessed us, and uh, we've got we've got three kayaks now, and so praise the Lord. We can load up and go. Yep. I have to go show you boys how to fish. Show us how to do it. That's right. Be good. That's Is right. it like his painting? Is it like his painting? Yeah. Oh, boy. Does yeah. he have hooks and tackle yeah. all in his shirt and hat? Water. <laughs> have a hook through feet. his nose I'm and everything. waterlogged and bleeding. And <laughs> I'm a fisherman. <laughs> oh, That's the way it works. Pain Man. equates to greatness in your life, doesn't it? It does. It does. Awesome. I mean, a man is known by how he looks. Hmm. You know, and so if you look like you're a painter. Yeah, a painter. You're a painter. Okay. That's how it is. We're referring to last week's episode. I know I can't, if you didn't yeah. watch I know it. I can't, no, I can't really preach, so I try to look like a preacher, so that way it'll it'll pass. We'd be surprised. There. You know, because of how I how I try to present myself, folks say, you know, you, you, you're a smart guy. No, so you <laughs> no I'm not. No. Y'all know I'm not, but I do look good. <laughs> well, smart. I look smart. Not no. good. Yes. Uh, so we're going to talk today about first-year pastorate. Yes, sir. And yours is different. Than mine Steve. and Steve's because your first year pastor it was church planning. You were starting yes, a church. Yes, sir. What were some of the? It, it, it was different, I'm sure, for in, in a lot of ways. But what were some of the things that you had to navigate in your first year? Uh, wow. Um, first year probably for me was just sort of so much unknown. Uh, you know, we you, you, we started knocking plan, on doors. Sure. Yeah, I mean, you know, you, you don't know if anybody's going to show up, and then from week one to week two, you don't know if anybody's going to show up. And uh, did you, you know, start with a family? Did you, was there nobody? Just you, RB, and the kids. Me, the only people I knew for sure that would be there, service one, was the ones you just mentioned. Me and my wife, and at that time we had three children. And did you have anybody show up for the first? Service? We did. We had forty-two that Are showed up for me? the kickoff service. Wow. Yeah, but now that was that was a, there was a lot of gawking involved there. You know, this is new, and let's go see what it's about. Always. Wow. And then uh, the Wednesday night, the first Wednesday night, we had like twelve, mm-hmm. and then the next Sunday morning we had like fifteen to twenty, mm-hmm. and that was really about where it started and it okay. floated. You know, so forty-two sounds like a big deal. But it was really a lot of just what is this about? Spectators, yeah, spectators, and so we, you know, really started with like that twelve to fifteen base. And um, are they all? Are, are how many of those that you originally started with are you still with you? Oh wow, that's an awesome question. Um, one's a widow lady, Miss Prella. She's been unable to attend church now for over a decade. Um, DJ was at the first service. He's now our song leader, um, and. Um, Miss Ruby Brown still with us. I'm trying to think. Wow, hmm. some there are several of those folks who have passed, and so of the ones that that have um, haven't passed, I'd say half are okay. still there or really? still affiliated. Yeah, really? mm-hmm. hmm. yep. In one way or another. In one way or the other. Yes. That that is great. It's really neat. I didn't know that DJ had been with you that whole time. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He was. Uh, a matter of fact, um, his. Um, my stepfather's brother, uh, which is also is his uncle as well, so maybe my uncle uh, through marriage, uh, he had passed, and so we ran into each other at the funeral. He was living in Hickory, uh, a couple hours north of me, uh, or of us there, and I invited him to the first service, and he said he would come, and so he stood good to his word, and he showed up for the first service mm-hmm. and never left. Wow. Yeah. That is awesome. It's amazing. Now, so... He and his wife, he, he was single, I'm assuming. He was single. Mm-hmm. When when he started coming. Yes. And so you were able to participate. Of course, he married Brother Tim Qualls. Brother Tim Qualls' daughter. Daughter. Mm-hmm. Yep. That is, that is great. Yep. Um, what what were, were there times in that first year where you thought, man, this is a mistake? No, never that. Here's the thing I look back on for the first year. Um, I had, I was ill-prepared. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and I made a lot of mistakes. Now, my mistakes were different than a guy who, say, is taking a church like you guys did. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? But my mistakes were probably more on expectation. My mistakes probably were more based on just being a novice. You okay. know what I'm saying? Those kinds of things. 
Um, and and I, I'll be honest with you, this is something I didn't even, I didn't go to Bible college. So I'd been pastoring three years, and so I got out there and just realized, man, I'm over my head. I need I need a better grasp of the Word of God because I'm going to preach this every week, three times a week. Um, but but uh, I just I just just so much unknown, yeah. and and then me out there not knowing what I'm doing. And and so I probably made the first five years. I was just a washout right. of the mistakes that I made. Now I don't I don't mean to infer anything here. It may infer something, but it's not intended. Okay. So coming out of the church that that you were a part of, right. that that really planted your church uh, or mothered uh, the Lighthouse Baptist mm-hmm. Church, you you took. Coming from there and then going to the Bible college that you went to, mm-hmm. which was as far as administration, not not fundamentals or truth, right. but as far as preaching is concerned mm-hmm. and as far as administration is concerned and as far as church culture is concerned, was kind of 180 degrees the opposite with Dr. Baker. Um, what, was the, what was the influence in your life to go to Calvary? Um, I was praying about what to do. I did, I knew I needed I needed I needed more. And um, I'd run in. Brother Terry Lawson had come in. Uh, he was at that time uh, raising support to go plant a church out in Washington State. Yes, Gig Harbor. And um, I told him I said, "Look, here's what I'm praying about." I said, "I'm thinking about this particular place." And he said, "Well, before you do, would you consider making this a matter of prayer? And would you go meet with Dr. Roger Baker?" And uh, and I did. Uh, I prayed about it for a couple of weeks. Set up a meeting. Went and met with him. We, pr- we, we he basically you know kind of interviewed me in his office that day. We prayed before I left and before I ever got off my knees in his office. The Lord had confirmed in my heart this is a, this is a place you need to be. And he I became mean, a mentor in your life uh, to some degree. Yes, yeah, a mentor, a friend, um, a confidant. Um, right. I still call him this day. I, How old is Doctor Baker now? Doctor Baker's in his seventies, if my memory serves me correctly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He's now with Macedonia World Baptist Missions. He's a European field coordinator. As driven as he's ever been, and loves God, loves people, and is a workaholic. Wow! Yeah, he's great? a great man. All right, he's a great man. So um, let, let's talk to Steve, okay? Okay. So Steve, uh, when, when we're talking about that first year, of course mm-hmm. you you, you um, because of and I don't, I'm again I'm not meaning this in any way, but because of your your positive style, your exuberance. God gave you a lot of platforms to preach in as a young preacher, because yes. you know, and folks still just love to hear you preach because you're, you're. I mean, you, you have a great pulpit delivery, and a great message. All right. So that being said, when you you take that first church, okay, uh, Lighthouse Baptist Page mm-hmm. in South Carolina, and you went into that church, what what? Did you see happen in the first year of your ministry that was a surprise to you, and you thought, "Oh, well, I wasn't, I wasn't looking for, I wasn't prepared for this. I didn't yeah. know about this." Oh yeah, well, I mean, you know, we we we've kind of joked about that, but like one of my first, you know, the week I got voted in, I got the call about the cat. Okay? <laughs> that, that was <laughs> so everything yeah. else from there. Right. When you get no, that you, big you know, cat funeral, yeah, they're not going to tell that one some, today. There's again. some new people that have no idea what you just talked about. Yeah. We're talking it's about a cat Gunny. Funeral. Yeah, Gunny the cat. It happens. It's just, that's a, <laughs> it, don't ever, I know. Ever, doesn't everybody get one of those? So. Yeah, not everybody gets their name in the paper for doing a cat funeral, yeah. but some people do. Yes. <laughs> I, you know, I, I guess in light of that question, you know, I I grew up in church, so I've been in church all my. I mean, literally all my life. Um, got saved and started preaching at fourteen. But some of the some of the first things, and I'm just being honest, um, and I and I credit this to the Lord. I know, but that's when I met. You know, you and I began to get close, and I right. began to be around you right. as, as a mentor. And I would call Brother Andy so many times, but most of it didn't have to do with the changes the church was going through. Most of it was changes of myself. Yes. Because I'd been to Bible college, mm-hmm. but I really had to relearn how to preach. And mm-hmm. I'm just being honest, and you're used to preaching kind of me evangelistically style, or not evangelistic, but just you're, you know, but when you're feeding people week after week, mm-hmm. you're you're in a different gear of preaching. Yep. Well, if so you're not, was, you should be. That's exactly right. right. If you're not, you and should. And so I, God quickly began to deal with me about that and begin to work. And I remember getting frustrated very early in the church with hearing this, well, we've always done this. 
And what I had to realize was is that there are people that have been in this church since it started, mm -hmm. and they are used to doing things a certain way. And I don't have to browbeat them, and, and I'm the man, and change what you've done for 30 years just so that I can prove I'm the path. There are going to be plenty of things where I'm going to have to interject and say, no, we're not going to do this anymore. Right. But I had to kind of just throw my little, my little, you know, you ain't arrived yet. You're not as, you're not as important as you think you are. Mm -hmm. You're not, you know, you're, you're going to have to learn how to serve, serve these people. You're, you're not coming in and just expecting everybody just to fall down and grovel at your feet, you know, mm -hmm. because you're here. And had to learn everybody ain't going to like you. You're not going to, some people within the first, you know, few weeks I was there, they were like, no, this ain't for me. I'm out of here. You know, I'm not, I don't like the way he does things. Yeah. And, and so, you know, had to go through some of that. So that was probably the, the initial first things, but I did learn from that. Mm -hmm. Well, you just touched on something that's very important. I want you young men to listen to Brother Andy just for a second. Um, one of the things that you're going to find is that when you take a church – there is going to be there's going to be a good number of people that leave that church within your first 12 to 18 months. Yeah. Um, now this is not not so generally speaking with the case of starting a church because right. most folks are going to find out everything they can find out before they come to mm -hmm. be with you right. and they're going to make their decision up whether or not they're going to come or or not to come. But with a church where you've taken it, and these people were already there when you got there, um, there you're going to find that many of the people loved the old pastor, and you're going to be different from the old pastor, and your style will be different. Your your the substance of your message may be the same, but your presentation may be yeah. different. Yeah, your administration's going to be different, and you're going to have people that walk off and leave you. I probably had. I'm guessing now 60-some people left within the first year of my being here mm -hmm. in Galilee mm -hmm. uh, who were either, you know, really directly related to being a part of the church or indirectly related, you know, being a regular visitor or whatever. And they left the church not because they hated me, not because they disliked me as a person, yep. but they couldn't get used to who I was as a preacher. I literally had a man that I still have. I still I have the utmost respect for this man, and he and I still are cordial, and we have a friendship. Sure. And you know, and, and even have some of his family in the church today to this mm -hmm. day. But he he simply called me to his home one day, and he said, "Listen." My wife and I are leaving the church. And I said, why are you leaving the church? He said, very simply this, I, can't, I cannot get used to your style of preaching. Now, it's not what I'm used to. It's not mm -hmm. what I'm accustomed to. It's, it's not the style mm -hmm. that I like. It wasn't that he said I didn't tell the truth. It wasn't said that he, he didn't say I was in doctrinal error. Yeah. He just couldn't get used yeah. to my style. Yeah. And so he pulled out and left. And as a young man, I, I kind of took that personally for just a little while. And then mm -hmm. I realized, hey, I'm not everybody's cup of tea. Right. It could have been a whole lot worse. It could have been a whole lot worse. At least he was honest with you. He was, it, and that was, that's what garnered him my utmost respect mm -hmm. is he was honest with me, mm -hmm. not mean, but he was honest. He didn't. He didn't use the tired old line. Well, the Dang Lord's it, leading us to leave. I mean, let's just be honest. Most of the time, that leading us to leave uh, is 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 a tired cliche for the fact that I ain't happy about something, and I'm and I don't want to tell you what it is. Right. So, yeah. That's right. And so. Um, at least the man was honest with me, and I respect him to this very day. Yes. So, first of all, in your first year of ministry, you're going to have people that leave you that seemed to be early on some of your great supporters. They, they bought in real quick, mm -hmm. and then they got mm -hmm. off the train about as quickly as they got right. on the train. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So you cannot take that personally. Give another piece of advice to a first year. I mean, that, that's exactly where I was going to head momentarily. And I was just going to simply say this. Every, every preacher, young preacher especially, has got to remember this. The world rejected perfection. You're not perfect. Mm -hmm. So they're going to be able to find flaws in Absolutely. either how you preach right. or what you, where you stand, whatever the case may be. And um, it, it will sting every time to some degree. Sure. You hope, you hope you never get over the sting because then you've grown so numb to it. Yep. You probably have quit caring yep. at all. Yep. So it's going to sting some. Uh, but one thing you got, you got to remember is this right here. 
that if you study the life of Christ, which mm-hmm. I think is one of the greatest studies for any young man before he starts pastoring, study the life of Christ. Don't look at it through your own lens of, of what you think it looks like. Look at it for what happens. His 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 life was a revolving door all the time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. People come and went, come and went, come and went, come and went. After three and a half years of ministry, 120 people in an upper room was all that was there. Yeah. I mean, and that's from the ministry of a the perfect son of God, yeah. always preached spirit field, never dropped any era, doctrinally yeah. infallible. Yeah. Okay. And so if that's what they got out of it, then guess what? Now, I'll say this to a first year guy, even though I didn't have to deal with this because I, you know, if any mess I got, I created. Okay. Because mm-hmm. right. I started it. Right. But just pump the brakes when you get there. Yeah. My, if I, you want to hear first year advice, don't, don't try to change anything. Yeah, those people that are there now mm-hmm. were there before you came, and yep. many of them kept it going for many, many years. Yeah, but yes. maybe in some cases before he's ever born. Yeah. So just ease up. You got to go in and, and be the man overnight. You ain't yep. got to establish. You ain't got to throw your staff in the ground and <laughs> beat your chest. It don't. Ha- you mentioned that a little bit. Or it don't have to happen if you'll just go in and preach the word and love people and learn people. Yeah, so the affection will come. Love and, and learn. It, it, you're going to have things that are going to need to be changed according to your administrative style and sure. how God's got you set up sure. and your personality. So there will be things that will need to be changed, or at least you feel they need to, oh, to yeah. be changed. Yeah. How long should a young man wait before he starts changing things? I mean, you know, it's unfair. I don't speak from experience here, but I'd say two to five years is, I mean, on, the, on anything real major. I, yeah. I would give at least the people 12 to 18, 24 months to right. get to know me, love me, um, and before I started really making major changes. And here's something else you don't have to do. You do not – if the guy that left um, – you hope they had affection for him. Yeah. Because if they never had affection for him and he was there any length of time, they don't have affection for you. Yeah. He, you don't have to kill him. Yeah. Right. You don't have to bury his ministry. He does not have to be a bad guy for you to get their affection. It's possible for people to love over their lifetime multiple pastors. Sure. Because most people. Well, most have, churches are. They're going to have multiple that, pastors. Right? Yeah. And so, uh, you know, you don't, have to, you don't have to cut his legs off. As a matter of fact, if you honor him, then most likely they'll, they'll be able to reciprocate. And, and grab hold of that and say, oh, okay, here's how it's supposed to work. Man, you know, pastor, 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 family of God, we love them all. You know what I mean? Right. And you hope that's kind of what you communicate. It, yep. As a matter of fact, for, for me, of course, I, I'm, I'm in a really good situation here at Galilee, third pastor since 1974 when the church was established. Uh, of the two pastors that have been here prior to me, uh, uh, Ronnie Simpson and Steve Griffith, uh, I never speak negatively uh, of those men to the congregation, even though, you know, a vast majority of the congregation is new since I have been here over the last 20 years. They're my people. But yet I still try to speak of those men when I speak of them with, um, you know, with, with respect right. and dignity sure. and sing sure. their praises. Mm-hmm. Because the truth is, you know, the foundation that I have to build upon was laid by those men. Mm-hmm. And I'm very appreciative sure. uh, of that. So uh, I've had a, a preacher friend, uh, many through the years, but uh, I've, my, my advice to them is don't change anything, anything, period. Don't change anything for the first 12 months mm-hmm. and just preach and love, love the people. And, but let them know that, it, you know, because I am who I am, I'm mm-hmm. sure there will be some changes that will be coming. Yeah. But I wanted to assure you, that they're going to be incremental, mm-hmm. and you may start seeing a few changes, you know, up about uh, about you know a year or a little fifteen months in, mm-hmm. uh, not nothing major, and be very honest with them about that, and uh, then of course tell them you want the opportunity and chance for them just to experience you serving them and loving them, mm-hmm. yeah. and then set about to do that. Yeah. I've got preacher friends that began changing things the first Sunday they were there. Wow. And they did not stay long. Yeah. Studying the twenty third Psalm, you you can you can deduct quickly that sheep are timid creatures by nature. Yes, sir. And so therefore that's why that, you know, rushing water, uh, trouble, anything like that, it spooks them. And you don't want a spooked church. Right. And so you just you just go you know, keep things as smooth as possible, and I, I agree with that. I would mm-hmm. agree with that yep. as far as not changing quickly. Uh, 
Another important thing is this. I, I, I've said this. I think I even said it to you years ago, but you, you don't – when God calls you to a – to church to pastor it, mm-hmm. you know, not your situation, but you know an established right. church. Particularly if your predecessor was a really good man and had stayed there for a long time, as is the case in you know with older pastors getting the place in point where they retire and bring a younger man on. Um, you need to be careful that uh, you don't see the flock as yours. As soon as you get there, they're not your flock. First of all, they're Jesus Christ's flock. Mm-hmm. Secondarily, Jesus put you there. The Lord put you there to really pastor another man's congregation until they become your own. Now, it has been my experience that for a pastor coming into a situation like that, generally speaking, Folks, do not give you your heart, give you their heart, until you've got about seven years into that ministry. Yeah, sounds mm. about right. Wow. Yeah. How about that? Hmm. Any advice first year? I mean, I'd just, you know, I'd walk slowly. Mm-hmm. I'd learn people. If I, if I were going to go take an existing church now, my goal in year one would probably be, if possible, according to the church size, try to have every family in my home sit down and not me give them my resume, but let me learn who you are. Yeah. Tell me good. about you, your that's conversion good. experience, you know, your life, what kind of work you do. Tell yeah. me about your family. Yeah. You know, get to know those know people. people. Yeah. Just, just, just get to know them. We, you and I were talking about a preacher last week that, uh, that sounds so bad, doesn't it? Uh, we were speaking about a man last week who <laughs> is a, who happens to pastor <laughs> rephrase. Um, who his church congregation, they don't even know where he lives. Oh, yeah. Mm. And he don't want them to know where he lives. Disqualified. It's disqualified, Not no given hospitality. That. I mean, it's a qualification. That's right. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. He's, he's, he doesn't belong in the, in the ministry <laughs> at all. Uh-uh. All right, give first yeah. year advice. Uh, I, I would say, you know, when I, when I took Lighthouse, I had you were right here at Galilee. Right. You got Bible Baptist Tabernacle, and that's Bobby Leonard. Down below me is Doug Taylor. Um, then on down, Brother Webb, Brother Watson. These are all men that I drew something from, but also had to realize that I don't have to. Um, I want to learn from these men. I'm foolish not to, mm-hmm. but um, I don't have to worry about doing it the, everything the way they do because I'm not pastoring the same people. That's right. Don't let kind of that prayer. Well, I want. I wonder what brother. I don't wonder what these other brethren will think if we do this a certain way or make right. a change here. I don't have to feel that thumbprint kind of pressure. Don't don't. God called you there. That's your. You're going to give an account for that ministry, and if it's something you have, you're you're in the scriptures. You're in the book, and it's a direction to lead those people in. Then don't let the pressure, let that the stopping thing be. Well, I'm worried what this yeah. other guy's going to yeah, think right, about me or that right. church. And then you said this to me at breakfast probably seven years ago. You and I were eating breakfast on a Saturday morning, and you said one thing I wish I could have told my younger self was don't don't burn bridges so quick. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, try and leave a door open because I I experienced Absolutely. that. And one of the most helpful families, one of our dearest families that that I got to pastor, they they left for just a little while, and then they were right back and they made things right. right and mm-hmm. once very loyal uh, servants to the to the Lord and the church. You know, one thing that devastates a lot of young preachers is when they're in the preparation stage and they're sitting in their church, they, they get to watch their pastor in ministry and they see things that they think, you know, I'd do that different and he probably didn't, maybe he didn't quite do that right. And they, they kind of get in a mentality sometimes when I get out here and, and, and I'm in charge or I'm the pastor, I'm going to fix all that stuff and everybody's going to love me. But then reality sets in. Right. People are people. People are people, and you're not everybody's cup of tea. Right. And there will be people sometimes that just move on. Yeah. And uh, it's easy to sit here and say, don't take it personal, but it still hurts every time mm-hmm. because to some measure, you feel like that's a personal rejection. Now, you yeah. got to learn how to process that yeah. or it'll kill you. And, and some people that don't wind up coming along and joining up with you say, man, I hope they join. I hope they stay up. They join. You don't ever know what yep. 
disaster you may have averted or just uh, problems that would have done. Maybe God did you a favor. That's I know right. you kind of took it. It kind of took a shot to your ego. It's true. But he may have caught, he it's may good. have saved you some stress yeah. on the road. Absolutely. Well, and, and you don't, here's another piece of advice. Don't run after every person that leaves. Yeah. Mm. I got something to say. Do you? Yeah, I do. Go ahead. In the Bible, Jesus never chased anyone who rejected him over a doctrinal position that he took uh, or over his person. He would go after people that fail like Peter did. Mm -hmm. He would go after people entrenched in sin like the, the woman at the well. But this crowd that, you know, scoffed at his preaching and his teaching, you know, and this, that, and the other, he never went after them. Nowhere no. in the Bible. No. And so my thing is this. Why are you leaving? If you're leaving, I, I didn't measure up to your, you know, what your expectations were. Uh-huh. Well, if you'll communicate what that was, I'll get better or try to. You may not still stay, but that's okay. I'll get better. I need to get better anyway. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But I'm not. I am not going to become a slave to public opinion. No. And I'm not going to become a slave to every time someone's not satisfied or thought I handled a situation right. We've got a righteous judge. We'll stand before him one day. Mm-hmm. He, he'll he'll make the ultimate verdict. It's gonna work, but yeah. I'm not going to Mm-mm. be uh, beat down over things that are to some measure out of my control. Yeah. So right. yeah, you're right. You can't you can't you, you can't, can't go chase after everybody. Mm-hmm. Nah. And there's a lot of guys who try to do that, yeah. and really, oftentimes, <clears throat> they prolong the agony that they're going to have to deal with when those folks eventually leave. Yeah. Yep. The folks you keep. Coaxing to stay, coaxing to stay, or eventually going to pull out anyway. Yeah, right. And and so again, don't burn bridges with them when they leave. Mm-hmm. No. It may take that for them to get down the road and say, "Man, did we ever make a mistake?" Mm. You, you never know. Sure. And so you just you just don't burn bridges with people. Um, now that doesn't mean you sweep things under the rug, but you don't burn bridges right. when folks leave, and you you try not to take those things personally. And you're going to have a lot of that in your first year. In your first year. Be be more aware of who the people are. As Brother Mike said a while ago, get to know those people. Mm-hmm. The biggest thing that you're going to need to do in that first year is to begin to develop influence in the lives of those people. Yep. Know about those people, their homes, their families, their extended family, if you can get some of that information. As you do that, God is going to begin to knit you into their life. Amen. That's what's going to happen. Another piece of advice, Brother Steve, anything? Um, yeah, let me see. Don't, uh, yeah, I would say, um, you know, when you when you go in, and Brother Michael hit on this about, about learning people, you know, um, there maybe check up on some people who have left during during this transition. Like if you're coming in behind somebody, right. there are some people that have you know, maybe maybe the reason they've gotten out is because of some inconsistencies in the church. Reach out to some of those people, mm-hmm. yeah. and uh, you know maybe they they're kind of forgotten about a little right. bit. Reach out to those people. There's also a flip side of that coin, yep. which is you need to find out which people. Left that don't need to come back. Yes, exactly that's right. Because not everybody needs to come back. To yeah, that that's right. That's, that's the positive. Exactly. I gave the negative. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Which the is battery normal. works fine now. It yep. works fine now. We can crank the engine. It started and off it rocking. Now we got everybody right. back right. Exactly. But there, there are a whole heap of things. Now I want, I want to give one good piece of advice to young men. Do your best to find out the way the church does things that have nothing to do with church. Yep. Okay? For instance, how do you do how do you do Christmas around here? Yep. Mm-hmm. How do you do your homecoming services around right. here? How do you do your special meeting around here? How how do how does the Sunday school work? Mm-hmm. And you need to find what's customary for that congregation of people and how long has it been customary yep. for them and you don't need to shake you know, shake shake up things in regard to non essentials that may cause you grief and problems and troubles. That's what Paul was trying to communicate when he said that he became all things to all, all men. men. In other words, yeah. he's, I'm not coming in here to the, your community and trying to get all y'all overnight to adapt to me. Yeah. That's the whole yeah. wrong and mindset. He, and he said that to the church at Corinth. Yep, yeah. exactly, exactly. Well, it's it's very important, you know, to to realize that there a lot of times young men by themselves trouble that they didn't need to have Mm -hmm. because they weren't thinking Mm -hmm. and they didn't have a mentor. And again, we get back to that 
stuff again. They need a mentor yep. in their life who is going to direct and redirect and help mm-hmm. them to understand. Yep. Um, you know, you you need to not make this choice or decision or not say that th- this thing or that. I, and I said things in my first pastorate in the first year, oh, mercy, just being too. macho, that I, I, people <laughs> left the church over. Sure, yeah, absolutely. And, oh, you know, that wow. those mentors need to be uh, – they've got to be more than just your other two preacher buddies who don't pastor yet or at all or and the other preacher friend who's been pastoring six months longer than you. Yeah, and they're yeah. smart. You'll reach out, reach out to some guys that are older. You said that you were surrounded by those guys, yeah. and it saved you. And as I got more of those men in my life, I stopped making some of the same silly mistakes I was making over and over. Boneheaded. Over. Absolutely <laughs> crazy stuff. Yeah, and it's easy to do. Yep. yep. And, and you don't mean anything by it. No. You're just stupid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's part of the process of growing. Of, you have yeah. to grow out of it. That's right. Process. We hope you are. We hope you grow out of it. Right. I've known some men that never did never grow, grow out, out of, of it. it. Yeah. Totally and it affected buddy. their whole life. It will. Yes, sir. Uh, grow. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's the whole thing. Grow. Yeah. Learn to grow. And I, learn to it, learn that you don't have it all figured out. I got another great piece of first year advice. It may not happen your first year, but if it happens in any year, never never be too proud to admit when you're wrong. Oh man, yeah. I mean, people there there is a there is a bad um, theology out there that says you know you can never let your people see your human side. Blah blah blah. No, but the exact I can't, opposite. I can't do that. Absolutely, absolutely. The people you pastor will respect absolutely. humility That's because exactly Christ right. was a picture of humility. Yes. So yeah. when they see you're humble. Struggle. And you're real about stuff, mm-hmm. you know, that you struggle from time, whatever the case may be, that's not going to cause them to think this man can't lead me. It's going to be the exact opposite. Yeah. yeah. You know? Yeah. I think so. I, I remember several years ago, I, I had said something in a, in a Sunday school lesson or in a preaching message, whatever it was. And what I said was exactly, I mean, it, it was incorrect, okay? It, it wasn't exact at all. It was incorrect what yeah. I said. Mm-hmm. Well, as soon as I got done, there was a man in the church who was just looking for an opportunity to correct me on something. Always had been looking. Mm-hmm. And when he found it, he come to me post haste, friend. He come right to me just as soon as I said the final closing word. He said, you're wrong right there. Let me show you why you're wrong. And and he was right. Mm-hmm. Okay, he, he, he was. He caught it. So what he didn't expect was what happened next. Sunday night rolled around. And I stood in the pulpit and I said, uh, church, real quickly, I said, what I said this morning, and this is what I said, is wrong. Brother so-and-so brought this to my attention, and here's what the Bible says. And he's right because the Bible is right. Mm. And yeah. it was not my intention to make that little little uh, error, mm-hmm. um, but I appreciate that being brought to my attention because the Bible is what's important. The Word right. of God, doing what's right by the Word of God. You see, what in, what I did was I took the emphasis off of him, yep. put the emphasis back on the Word of God, sure. yep. showed that I was not an infallible man yep. and was willing to get right when I was confronted with the truth. See, the importance is not being right or wrong. The importance is the truth of the Word of God. And when you show that to your congregation, uh, it's going to give them a renewed uh, confidence in the fact that you're not there to establish yourself for your own kingdom, but the kingdom of God, which is why the Lord brought you there to begin with. Right. Well, I think it's been a good episode. What do yes. you think? Mm-hmm. Wish I'd have heard it, you know, 13, 14 years ago. Absolutely. Well, I, there's a lot. I mean, I'm, I really was, re, I was more green than either of the two of you. And, you know, the, the business I was in was, it was really a cutthroat, high pressure. I mean, we were, we were rough on people. I mean, it, part of our part of our job. Yeah. And in my job, part of part of what I did was I I had to find people that didn't want to be found. I mean, that was part of the job. Mm-hmm. And so you had to be just. I mean, just. So people have been running from you for a long time. A long time. Secular work, church life. That's right. That's what I'm saying. I, ain't, I know we're laughing, but it's the truth. <laughs> right. And right. so um, when I brought that who I was Mm -hmm. into the church world without a mentor. I didn't really, I had a pastor. I love my pastor, but we, we didn't have a mentor relationship early on. 
And, um, man, I said some things and did some things that cost me that it didn't have to. Sure. And I, I don't want that to happen to some of you young men. Yep. Hey, we appreciate you listening to the Higher Grounds podcast. The fact that you come by honors us, and we're humbled Absolutely. by that. Absolutely. Yep. And, uh, hey, you keep pressing on the upward way, and by the grace of God, we'll see you next week. Mm-hmm.